But let's talk about working in teams. Um, like I said in the previous video, the most common comment I hear from students is, I hate working in teams with other people. And while I understand that frustration, I have been in groups where I did the lion's share of the work and I did most of the heavy lifting. Um, the fact is, is that one, the state of Texas says we have to do it. So we don't get much choice. Um, if, if you don't like it, you're going to take it up with your legislature. Um, two, though, and this is why they require it, is that there are few professions ever in the world in which you don't work with other people in some manifestation. Um, even if you were, say, a writer working at home all day by yourself, if you want to be published and making make money out of it, you typically have to work with an editor or you have to work with an agent and you have to get feedback from them as well. And you have to meet deadlines and you have responsibilities and expectations to other people. And so... Um, while I understand the frustration, it really is a skill that we all have to work on. I've been in groups where, um, you know, things were amazing. I learned so much from my collaborators and I really, our project was better for it because we had this opportunity and this experience of learning and growing for, with each other. And so that's why we're going to do a group assignment for the remainder of the semester. All right. So let's just recap. This is going to be a large project. If you put this project together in a weekend before it's due, it's probably not meeting the requirements for the assignment. We have set aside about four weeks for this project. So you want to kind of take that in mind when you're working on it. There are high expectations for a project of this length if we're going to spend this much time on it. And so you want to make it the best representation of the work that you can do. And that means you have to start early. Um, collaborating in an online environment where people are um, working at different times of the day, different days of the week, everything takes a little bit longer to do. It takes longer to get feedback from your collaborators. It takes longer to get, um, you know, kind of consensus. And so we've set aside a lot of time to help you with that. But one of the things is you're going to have to remember to be patient. You have to be patient with others and you have to be patient with yourself because we're all still learning. So this is a large project with many components that all fit together. And so to help manage the workload, you've been divided into groups. So discuss as a group how you'll approach this assignment. The best thing you can do is start planning now. And I know you already hate team projects, right? You're afraid that your partners will let you down, that you'll be left holding the bag for a class assignment. But the fact is that learning to work with people is one of the most important skills you can develop. Our jobs are 20% working by ourselves and 80% working and collaborating with others. And you think, I don't want to work with a team because my grade is on the line. But in the workforce, you'll work with teams when your job is on the line. And also learning to be a good team player is an important skill because if you're not a good teammate, you're going to get fired. Second, with all the technological resources we have available to us, there's also no reason why you can't do group projects in an online course. In fact, much of the work that writers and scholars do in publishing and research is completed with collaborators who are on the other side of the country for, from each other. They too work just like you in various jobs with different work schedules, and they use Google Docs, FaceTime, Skype, and Facebook chat to make it work. I've worked with collaborators on chapters from books um, across the world. Um, I had a collaborator in Germany one time. I've had collaborators in South Carolina, uh, Washington, Pennsylvania, and we used uh, Google Docs and Google Slides. And, you know, one of us would be on at three o'clock in the morning and another one of us would be on at three o'clock in the afternoon. And we would leave comments to each other in the Google Docs and in the, uh, the slides. And we would have frequent team meetings in, um, you know, in real time or asynchronously, meaning via um, email going back and forth. And I've had a lot of success in that way just by not being kind of tied down to only working with people in my specific geographic sphere. And so you want to be open to the idea that collaboration really can happen, you know, with people all around the world. And finally, the state of Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board mandates it. Uh, they say we have to do group projects because students have to learn to be good team players. It's one of the most important skills that you're going to get coming out of college. And so for what it's worth, most students at the end of the semester actually enjoy working with other classmates. So here's some suggestions for how to proceed. 
you want to assign a team lead. So that means you want to, somebody in your group needs to step up and say, I'm gonna be responsible for making sure that if this is a train, I'm gonna be the conductor to make sure all of the, the pieces of the train get down the track, all right? I'm gonna be the one that's kind of sending out check-in emails, um, creating the Google Doc, creating the Google Slide, sharing it with everybody, sending updates to my instructor. If things are going off the rails a little bit to kind of keep that train metaphor going, um, I'm going to let my instructor know um, so we can kind of start thinking of a plan to move forward. So assign a team lead. They follow up on the deadlines, check in on report progress, make final decisions when there needs to be someone who says, okay, this is what we're going to do. A lot of times the breakdown with teamwork is when nobody wants to make a decision. And so you kind of keep floundering around, well, what's the theme and, you know, what are we going to do? And so you need somebody to say, okay, I hear everything you're all saying, and I'm going to make the decision now. This is our, this is our, our charge. This is what we're going to do. So you also need a team lead who can set deadlines for the group. So everybody needs to have their interviews completed by next Wednesday. And then you check in to make sure. Um, I will, in my class, give extra credit for the team lead. So the team lead gets a little bump in their grade for the group project because they took on a leadership role. You also want to allocate sections of the assignment to specific members of the team. So if you're going to write an introduction, maybe you want to assign it to one person to get started. You want to assign the conclusion to another person. Um, and then they have to have it turned into the group by a certain day so that everybody can look at it and add to it. But then you need to trust your people to do what they say they're going to do. You have to have faith in people. You have to believe them when they say, I promise you, I have to work this week, but I'll have it to you Sunday night by 10 o'clock. And then you have to leave them alone to do it. All right. You have to have faith in them. And by the inverse, you have to be somebody who's worthy of that trust. So if you say you're going to have an assignment turned in by 10 o'clock on Sunday, you have to have that assignment turned in by 10 o'clock on Sunday, because it's not just you who's waiting. Your, your teammates are also waiting. I would encourage you to use Google Docs to write one document with each student participating. So you've been practicing with Google Docs over the course of the semester. So go ahead and, and team lead, create a Google Doc and share it with everybody in your group and use that one document to write your um, collaborative project. Um, Google Docs is amazing. I've used it for countless projects with people all over the country. You also want to use Zoom or FaceTime or WebEx to chat with each other in real time. Y'all are all over the state. Um, you have to figure out a way to communicate without sitting in the same room. And you have plenty of resources to do that. We know that now because of the pandemic. And you also want to set deadlines um, for parts to be completed. So if you're working in Google Docs, you'll need to be able to see each other's progress on the sections. Then come together, say at 10, you know, at 4 p.m. on Sunday to revise and edit and proofread. But that being said, you'll be also evaluating each other's progress throughout this project. So you'll be assigning a grade to yourself and to your collaborators. And I will consider that grade in the final uh, project's kind of progress. So have faith in each other, compromise. Remember that conflict doesn't mean dysfunction. A lot of student, students think that if everything is not going 100% according to plan, that it's not going well. But conflict doesn't always mean dysfunction. It's what you do with that conflict. Do you come back and use that conflict to kind of push it further? Um, my husband and I uh, built a house and we had a lot of conflict about the furniture and um the the wall art and the you know the paint colors and the tile colors and i would be the one that would be very like let's you know um some of my ideas i wanted a pink couch i was like i want a pink velvet couch and my husband's like you live with three other boys or three other men you can't have a pink velvet couch in the living room so I got a blue velvet couch um, and it's a little bit more masculine and it's a little bit um, of a compromise, but we kind of had to have that conflict back and forth about whether or not I could get this pink velvet couch. And in the end, it's probably better for it because I look at my living room and go, yeah, I don't know if a pink velvet couch would have actually worked here. Um, and so it's it's better in the end because we kind of both, you know, kind of uh, 
gave a little and because he certainly didn't want a velvet couch in the first place. But now even he'll admit, okay, it actually looks kind of good in here. So you want to think about how conflict doesn't always equal dysfunction. And remember that you are all very bright, articulate, goal oriented and passionate students. Um, that's why it makes it so great to work with you. And that's also why it can be really, really frustrating sometimes. So just keep that in mind. Um, presume that the people you're working with are doing the best that they can. And they're juggling a lot, just like you are. And we're all doing the best we can. So when you come to work with your team, always come from the position of um, believing the best in them, all right? Presume competence. Um, presume integrity and believe that they're doing the best that they can. So rather than kind of twisting off, maybe if something's not going exactly according to plan, take a step back. Remember that you're juggling just as much and come at it from a position of charity and grace. If you have any questions, I am also here to help keep everything on track.